Hello guys, welcome to my tutorial today. Um, so we are in quarantine week like three. Um, so this is very real for the times. I have no makeup on. I am in a baggy white t-shirt. I haven't washed my hair in three days. Um, and I am going to show you a curling tutorial. So don't try to judge me on my appearance too much, please. Um, okay, so I wanted to show you taking my hair down because that's how it's been for the last few hours. That's what it looked like when I worked out. Um, I came in and I, you know, rinsed my whole body off, washed my face and all that jazz in my skincare routine. So this is just a very real situation for if you're getting ready in the morning, you've just done your workout, your hair is a mess. Well, now let's take care of it. So we're going to start out with a little bit of heat protectant. Um, I know in past videos I have used the Whey heat protectant or the um, Monate heat protectant, but today I'm going to do the Davines one because this one I really love. I feel like this one out of all of them gets you more bang for your buck. Um, I also really like this one because there's no feel to it, but the one thing is when I do sell it to people is you do have to like zap it with a blow dryer or let it um, set in because it is liquid as you can see. So what you want to do with this is just a nice general spritz all through your top layer and then I'll go through just kind of like one in the middle there, one in the middle there, and we'll go one in the middle back. The main thing that you want to protect obviously is your ends. It's the oldest hair. It's the most fragile hair. Um, typically these days when you are blonding or coloring your hair, you're always getting the most lightness at your ends. So those are going to be what you want to protect the most. Um, I kind of will spritz it like at my root just to give some moisture to work with because I am going to use my um, blow dryer to kind of like smooth this out a little bit. So please ignore this part. I'm just going to zip through it. But basically what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my brush and my blow dryer and I'm going to come in. And honestly, like I know everybody gets really scared of these, of getting them stuck in your hair. And if your hair is really tangled, the yes, there's potential that it'll get stuck in. But I mean, I always do one, two, three rotations. The brush is against my scalp. And then I'll use that tension to pull my hair smooth with the blow dryer going against it. So they are scary at first, but honestly, like they're really not that bad. You just don't want to like get in there and then like be rotating a ton once the hair has already locked into the brush. So again, I'm gonna do this motion with my blow dryer, so stay tuned. Okay, so you can see how we just kind of like minimized the bump from our rubber band up top. Um, and like I said, I'm on day three. So what's nice is with the heat, it, it heats up your hair and allows it to be more kind of like pliable and moldable. So it's nice because um, like you're greasy, yes, but I swear like when you blow dry it, it just almost kind of like dries that partially. It's not going to get rid of your grease, but it dries that, but then it allows it to kind of like heat up and be more moldable. So if you do have kinks or bumps or whatever at your root, um, that helps kind of just take care of that. Um, so I'm going to plug in two different sized curling irons for today because I know some of you, um, might only have a one inch. Some of you typically use like an inch and a quarter, an inch and a half. So so I'm gonna do curls with both. Um, I am using one Hot Tools curling iron, probably at about 400 degrees. And then I am using one Con Air. Um, I think I stole this from my mom like two years ago or something because um, I had cut my hair really, really short and I was getting a lot of questions on how to curl it when it's short. And, um, I didn't have this size curling iron 
So I just stole hers. It's Con Air. Honestly, the only reason why I'm using it is because she never really used it. So it's in perfect condition. The plates are still really coated. Um, it's not a brand that I would typically probably recommend all the time, but it's in really good shape. So um, I'm gonna use this one. Um, and I think this is like from Target for like 20 bucks. And honestly, it's perfectly fine. Now, if I use this every day, um, I would probably say like it's probably only going to last you two to three years. The thing with your hot tools um, and when they go bad is if the heat regulation, like if you turn it up to 400, it gets hot, you drop it down to 200 and it doesn't cool down. It means the heat regulator isn't working anymore um, or when the coating on it has started to wear off and you're exposed to a rougher metal and it's not like the silky shiny feel that it is when you first get it. Um, so those are definitely tips that I would say if your curling iron is five to seven years old, you probably need a new one, um, unless you don't use it that often. Because I have a feeling this one's older than that, but I don't really know. Um, okay, so curling with a curling iron, um, I kind of typically curl all the same no matter what tool I'm using. So what I like to do is I like to kind of separate from my ear forward is where I start. So I start above my ear, I work my way forward to this front piece and then I come back over here, I work ear forward and then I will curl the back. Um, there's really no right or wrong way to do that. That's just how I do it. Um, I also don't section my hair. I like to pick up the hair from where it naturally lays so I can kind of see, okay, if it's sitting on top, I'm gonna bring my, you know, my curl height higher. Um, if it's underneath, I'm going to bring my curls starting halfway down. So on top, my curl's probably gonna start around my eyebrow level, but in my underneath sections, it's really only gonna start probably like at my jaw. There's no reason to curl your roots um, up high when you're sitting underneath unless you really want that extra volume. So, okay, a um, few things. When curling hair, we don't curl with the thumb. Um, most of the time that's gonna put the, the thing going like away from us, which you're gonna have to curl towards your face. If you go against your face, then you'll bend it against the arm and you'll get a crease on it. So you always wanna bend with the way around the arm, if that makes sense. It's hard to explain, but I'll show it to you when it's in my hair. Um, so I do this in the same way that I do my flat iron curls. I keep my barrel straight up and down. I take a pretty big section. I'd say, honestly, like, I don't know, like two inches by an inch. Um, I smooth it all out this way. And then I take my curling iron with my finger. Now, like I said, this is the top section. So I'm going to start my curl up a little bit higher. Um, I'm probably going to bring my curl up into this area, but because of the curling iron, we are going to start about midway and we are going to wrap up. Now we're just going to hold, 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 test the hair, touching just the hair, obviously not the hot metal plates until you can feel the warmth coming all the way through the hair. Then we're going to untuck. We're going to lightly lift the arm, slide down, and we are going to rewrap. We're going to hold, hold, hold. Now, depending on how hot your iron is and how fine or coarse your hair is, the time that you hold your curl will change. Um, but like once I get to my ends and my ends are a little bit more fine, um, I am not going to hold it as long. And then we'll move on to the next section. So if your hair is more fine, you're going to not hold it as long or have as high of heat. If your hair is more coarse, you're probably gonna have a higher heat and hold it longer. So again, we're in the underneath section, check section. So I'm gonna come lower on my curl this time and I'm not going to go up as high. Um, I don't need my curl to be super high up on my section. And then I'm gonna release, slide down, curl back up. Now, this is where it's like, you can get as funky and fun with your curls as you want. You can just slide that all the way down and that's going to give you more of a straighter tail. Like, yes, it is bent right now, but I promise you it's going to be straight. There's no need to go back over it right now and flat iron that end out, just leave it. So now I'm gonna kind of 
take a peek at what I've got going on. So I curled this whole section was one curl. Then that was one. So with this, I'm going to come up and I'm going to do this, I think, as one section. So again, taking it, curl up, hold. Now my curling iron's like at its hottest, so it's definitely moving a lot faster. I'm not having to hold it as long. I'm going to do one more and then I'm just going to gently slide. And when I slide, I am lifting my arm just slightly. When I say just slightly, like it's literally like that much. You're not lifting, but you're just allowing half the amount of tension as you slide through those ends. So then I'm going to split this in two. And the reason I'm splitting it in two is because I do have shorter layers around my face. If I were to take this all into one, those little pieces will fall out and not curl um, how I want them to. So as we get closer to the face, I do take a little bit of a smaller section. So again, this is just like a regular curl. You're going to curl away from your face. You're going to uncurl, slide ever so slightly down, and recurl your wand. And you can use two hands if you need to use two hands. You know, you do what you gotta do. Then I'm gonna go one more. Down, half bend, just a half bend. And then I'm gonna slide through those ends. Now around my face, we don't want volume of our curl to sit above our eyebrow. You want volume of curl to sit around between your cheekbone and your eyebrow so that the width of your curl and the width of your hairstyle pulls this open. It widens around your eyes. We don't want to widen our forehead. We want to widen our cheekbone to our eyes. So with this, like I said, I have these little pieces. So I just want those bent ever so slightly. So with this, I'm actually going to take my section and keep it flatter this way. I'm going to come in and just bend right at my eye. And then I'm going to move down a little. Move down a little. Lift up my arm, slide all the way down. All right, so that's one whole half with the skinny flat iron or the skinny curling iron. And then I'm gonna go through and I'm gonna show you with my thicker iron. So as you can tell, my hair is, I'd say it's medium length. It's not super short um, and it's not long by any means. So I can get away with doing either size, honestly. I would say the main difference is probably how many times I'll twist. So, with that, again, I'm going to be using my pointer finger on my arm. I'm going to section out my curl. And again, I'm taking a pretty big curl. So with this, I'm gonna lift with my pointer finger. My arm is facing towards your mirror, towards your phone for me. And we're going to go in and we're going to put it up and down, close, and we're going to curl up. Now, because I am using a bigger curling iron for this, what I'm going to do or what you're going to notice is it's not gonna wrap around the actual curling iron as much. When we want to wrap it more is when it's coming off. So I'm going to release, slide down, and I'm gonna curl over that bend that I just made when I released my curl. Then I'm going to release, slide down, curl up over that previous curl. And then I'm going to release and I'm gonna, mm, let me do it one more time. And then I'm gonna slide off those ends. So as you can tell, we twisted just slightly different. With this one, we wrapped up twice, released, wrapped up twice, released. With this one, it's so, it's so big, we're wrapping once, releasing, but then we're going to wrap and wrap over the section we just released. I promise you, it makes a difference. So then I'm gonna take this all as one section. So 
I'm gonna make sure that I get those little hairs that go right around my face. They're so fragile that if you do those on their own, you can cause some serious damage. Whereas, and they just heat up so fast that I feel like as you're curling, it's like overheated before you're even done curling. So I like to just take it in one big section. Again, I'm using my finger, my arm is facing forward. I'm gonna come down lower and curl up. You're starting lower when you have a bigger curling iron, obviously, because it's gonna take up more space when you're curling up. If you start too high, you're gonna be like against your scalp. So always start lower. Then we're going to uncurl. Now I'm unducking towards the mirror. I'm gonna slide down a little bit. Then I'm gonna slide over what I just curled. Obviously, you can be testing gently for heat through that section. Uncurl, slide down, roll up. And I mean, now you can see it's almost just like a rope of hair kind of curled around. Then I'm just going to slide gently through those ends. Okay. So next, I'm going to come up and I'm going to do this section. heating all the way through. Now it doesn't need to be piping hot. Your hair should be warm, but it shouldn't be like, oh, hot. You just need enough heat to make sure that that whole section got warmed and it's being heated into that position. So we're going to unwrap, slide down, twist up. And then we're going to slide down, twist up. Now you can see I almost lost all my ends. They're barely through it. That's okay. Now we're gonna slide out. So, I probably should have done slightly different sectioning, but that's okay. So this one's gonna be smaller. That's okay. But again, I wanna leave out my front pieces because that area needs to be done in, as its own, no matter what, just because of the way that it is layered and pieced. And then, so I'm gonna take that front section, I'm gonna come in, and again, you can see how I'm taking it flatter. So in the back, I move my sections out to where it's more narrow this way. But when I'm coming around my face, I'm gonna take these sections that are flat this way because what I want the curl to do is I want the curl to elongate like this to where the front pieces of my hair swoops down and it's not like curled all the way around. We don't want old school curls. We want that swooping face framing curl. So I'm gonna go in I'm keeping this lower. Basically, my shortest piece in the front is barely going to get a bend. I'm going to untuck. And then sometimes I'll just like twist it like that. So now we have two different sides. So I'm going to let this curl. Um, I'm going to go ahead and curl the rest of my head. Um, I think I'm just going to zap through it with my smaller curling iron. And I'm just going to zap through this section because honestly, you just do it the same way. Take big sections. We're going to wrap up. Now I will say this. I guess I do have a tip. When you are taking the bigger back sections, you want to make sure that whatever's being wrapped around is not being like pushed down because you will get a kink in it. It's not the end of the world kink. You can still work with it or smooth it out or like recurl over it, but um, it will create a kink. And what I mean by that is, let me see if it'll happen this time. So again, I'm taking pretty big pieces. Like I'm definitely not measuring exactly, but you can see that's pretty wide. So I'm going to take it and I'm going to wrap it. Now see how it, okay, right here. See how it will push those hairs down. So what I do is just kind of come through, straighten that back out, making sure those hairs aren't being pushed down. Um, and then I'm going to untuck, curl down. 
And in my back underneath sections, I do it way less. Like I pretty much am just like, bing, bang, boom. Like wrap up, unwrap, wrap up, unwrap, slide down. We don't want a ton of volume in our underneath, especially in our back, especially if you have shorter hair because you'll get a bush down here and you won't have as much up here. And we don't want triangle shape. We want more volume up top and more sleekness through our ends. Okay so. okay, so this is another tip for the back of your head. Um, I mean, just turn your head sideways like this to where you can see it. So if you feel, and you can feel obviously when you're pulling, like, okay, this is coming from the middle of the back of my head. So I know that, that I'm going to do this going that way. Um, so you kind of just do it by feel, pull your hair to the side and curl up. You know, there's no like, you don't have to be like behind your head doing this magically, not at all. You're just pulling to the side to where you can see it. I just like to measure like half my head going the same way, the other half going the other way. I don't do an exact line because that way when you fluff your fingers through it, if you did some that kind of overlap, they just lock together and it's really pretty. Um, so now I know, as you can see, I know that all of that side is curled. So I'm going to come over here. I feel like I have one more section, but this is the way that I tell. So I pull it all to one side. I leave it my curls and you can see like, that's probably like 12 curls per side. Nothing crazy. And honestly, everything feels curled. So now what I'm going to do, and I always leave my curling iron hot until I'm done done. Um, I'm going to take my dry shampoo. This is my favorite. This is from Evo. It's called Water Killer. Um, I will take it, and I still have it right through my curls. I will take it and just at my root go through, and I typically do three sections, then I'll do the other side root, 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 and then back one, two, nape of the neck, and then I'll kind of fluff through. Now, with having used a bigger curling iron on my shorter hair, you can tell how there is a slight difference. The one inch is probably a little bit better for me. I guess if I'm wanting more of like a curl to it, the bigger one, um, which I actually think is an inch and a half is going to give us more of that wave. So yes, you can use both no matter the length of your hair. It just depends on the look that you're going for. So what I will say is like with my bigger one, I'm not liking how much drag I have right here. So I'm going to kind of come in the middle of this one and I'm going to kind of redo this. And what I'm going to do to kind of change that up is I'm going to like not slide down as much and really curl over that previous area. So now I've done it probably four times, whereas before I only really did it twice and now I'm going to slide down and then I'm going to go ahead and kind of do that with this front section as well. So I'm going to come up, I'm going to untuck and basically recurl right away. And then I'm going to untuck. Now I'm going to slide a little and then curl back up. And now I'm going to slide down. And then the rest of it's really pretty. You see how it's just, this is probably like, if your hair doesn't curl, hold curl as well, 
Um, I would go for a smaller size, do a tighter curl because in an hour, two, three, my hair holds pretty, curl pretty well. This will probably look like what this looks like now and this will look like this really soft kind of beachy wave. So like I said, it depends on the look that you wanna go for. It depends on how well your hair holds curl. Um, and you can see just kind of adjusting that. Now I've got that body kind of popped up a little bit more and it's not so much like this flat land and into my length, with ha which had more curl. Awesome. All right, I am digging that. So again, this side was a one inch, this side was an inch and a half. Um, and I'll go ahead and turn around and show you the back. All right, so that is that. That is my curling iron tutorial. Um, main things to always keep in mind is if you're curling away from the face, you need to start with your arm forward towards your mirror because that's going to be curling that way. If you're holding your arm forward and you curl this way, that hair is going to push against the arm and give you that crease. Now, if you want to curl towards your face, um, which I don't recommend in this area, if you want to alternate curls, like always start it behind your face frame pieces, but then you would go in and have the arm away from you and then curl towards your mirror. I curl all my hair going the same way and then I just kind of change like how tight my curls are within those sections. So I took smaller sections through my top so that's why these ones are going to give me a little bit more tightness whereas in my underneath curls you can see back here, it's barely just a wave. And so it kind of keeps them from sitting too tightly together and still kind of gives you that like body, that messy kind of textured appearance. And then I think that's why I wasn't digging this side as much. I didn't do these top ones any tighter. And so when it fell, it all just kind of like fell too soft and too together. Um, so that's my tutorial. Hope you guys enjoyed it. If you have any questions, feel free to lay them down below and let me know. Um, I hope this was helpful. Oh, one more thing. If your hair doesn't hold curl as much and you need to use something, I prefer texture sprays, but like this is when you would do it. Like once you know your curls are done and you're not gonna be putting heat to them anymore, then go in with your, um, I prefer a texture spray, but you can use a hairspray as well. Um, Evo's texture spray is one of my favorites. And then Dauvinesse is one of my favorite hairsprays. This stuff smells so good. Um, so then you would just kind of like, I always kind of layer it when I do it. And I would go like one, two, one, two. Now if I was using my texture spray and I needed a little bit more volume, you could come in right at your root, take your texture spray, zap it right there. That's gonna help give you a little bit more grit. And again, we'll do this side just for symmetry. So like I said, I haven't washed my hair in three days. Um, I did a three mile walk yesterday. I did a 45 minute workout this morning. I've definitely sweat. Um, but the dry shampoo, the extra little bit of blow dry, it all makes a difference and, and helps keep your hair fresher longer. So again, hope you guys enjoyed this tutorial and I will see you soon.